Well, hello everybody. My name is Nick Mikesell. I'm one of the trend and design managers here at Michaels. Um, I support the kids, crafts, and celebrations, and also fine arts categories. Um, I myself am a fine artist and a designer. Um, I went to school at the University of Toledo, Go Rockets. Um, some of my favorite things that I love to draw are figures, like figure drawings and birds and also portraits. And here are a few of uh, examples of some of my drawings that I've done. Um, first thing that I'm gonna let you guys know, today's class is an intro class. So it is very much a beginner's, beginner's class. Um, what, what we're gonna cover today is we're gonna mainly focus on the materials that you're gonna be using. Um, there was a materials list that was provided in the invite and on also on the class description. Um, if you didn't pick up those materials, it's no big deal, no, no problem. You can, trust me, you can use whatever you have at home. As long as you have a pencil, an eraser, and a piece of paper, uh, we'll be good to go. Um, so first thing first about drawing, it's supposed to be fun. If you're not having fun at drawing, then you, you should work at have, having fun with it because um, there's really no right or wrong way to do drawing. I'm sure you hear that about everything. You hear that about all sorts of different things, but honestly, drawing should just be really fun and relaxed, relaxing. Um, and you should really just draw what you like. That's what I do. Um, like I said, some of the things I like to draw are portraits and uh, animals, birds especially, and that's what we're gonna be drawing today. So after I get through all these materials, um, we're gonna be drawing this uh, hummingbird. Um, right here um, in a few minutes. Um, now, with this hummingbird, this is an image that I just pulled off the internet, um, black and white image, just printed it on my um, home printer. Um, and what you might be thinking is, well, why are you using a picture? Trust me, as a, if you're a beginning artist, it's really good to work from a photo reference. Um, I myself, I use photo references all the time. I didn't draw the, this gentleman back here. I didn't draw him from um, memory. I drew him from um, an actual live model. Um, so um, you can still draw from your memory. You can definitely just doodle what's in your mind and have fun with it for sure. But um, it always helps if you are gonna draw something realistic um, to work from a photograph. Um, and of course, your materials make a huge difference. So um, without any more delay, let's start talking about these, these materials. Um, the first things first, of course, is a pencil. Now, and let's look, take a overhead shot here. So hopefully you can see these numbers that are on these pencils. Now, the pencil set that I provided in the um, course description is available at Michael's. It's, it is a beginner set and it'll have a range of different pencils. Um, each of these pencils have a different lead weight. And that lead weight is called out by letters and numbers on the print that are printed on the wood uh, shaft. Um, so in this particular case, this has an H and a B. Now what the H stands for is the hardness of the lead. And what the B stands for is the blackness or the darkness of that lead too. So an HB is pretty much an even hardness and, and a darkness. Um, you'll see that some of these pencils too, they have that number, let me get this so you can see it a little bit better. They have a number that is in front of the letter. So this is a 2H. An H pencil is a hard lead pencil. And you will notice that difference when you're making your marks across the paper. Um, you can feel that difference with the lead as it, as it rubs across the surface of the paper. So the number, the higher the number on an H pencil, the harder it is. So the lighter the line will be. Um, so it's definitely a harder lead. So that number, the higher number means a harder lead. On our B pencils that were included in that set, you'll see that they have numbers in front of them too. And what that means is it, uh, um, 
for the 2B, the 4B. The 2B is a soft, is not as soft as a 4B. So the higher this number goes, the, the, the darker the um, lead, the softer the lead. Now you're probably wondering why do we have so many different pencils? Can I use just one pencil? If you're sketching, yes, of course. You can just use one pencil if you're just trying to doodle out some ideas, no problem. But if you wanna draw something like this hummingbird and you want it to have all these different values and really look three-dimensional and have some layers to it, then what you do is you build up and you use these pencils together. Um, and you usually start with a hard pencil and then you work your way up using softer pencils to create um, all the different values. And that's pretty much the name of the game when we're drawing is building up our values. So let's talk about some of the other materials that we have. We also have the paper pad. Um, this particular paper pad that we, I have provided in your list is a level two, which is an intermediate drawing pad. Um, and quality paper. Some of the things that you'll notice here is that it is a 70 pound paper. And if you flip open the paper and you feel it and rub your hands across it, you'll feel it has somewhat of a tooth to it. Like there's a little bit of a grain on it. Um, if you did not, if you did not uh, purchase this pad or if you have other paper at home, let's say you're using a printer paper for today's exercise, perfectly fine. You can use a sheet of just regular home printer paper. Um, but if you were to create a drawing that you really wanted to last, don't, don't use your printer paper. You want a better quality because printer paper is about 20 pounds. It, some printer papers are not completely acid free and you want something that's gonna be acid free because it'll stand the test of time. So when you really frame up your piece that you've drawn that you love, it sticks around for a while. So um, this paper is great for that. The next thing that I wanna talk about are your erasers. Now you might have noticed I have this in my hand and I've been kind of fiddling around with it and playing with it. This right here is what's called a kneaded eraser. Um, and I've had it in my hand because I'm allowing the warmth from my hand to keep it nice and soft and pliable. Um, because the one that you get in, if you bought that set, um, you'll notice that it's really hard when you pull it out of the wrapping and you want it to really be pliable and soft. In order to do that, you kind of got to pull it apart. And this in itself is kind of fun and relaxing and can be de-stressing. It's kind of like an ASMR uh, type of experience here. Um, but you really want it to get pliable and soft. And there's a reason for that, which I'll get to in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm keeping it in my hand. You also have a, um, a block eraser, which is a hard eraser. And um, this is a standard eraser that is used um, by a lot of artists. Um, they, you also see that there are click erasers. I have some uh, two different click erasers that I use, um, that I use actually for drawing. Um, but I'm not gonna cover those today. Those will be for my advanced drawing class. Um, so today we're just going to be using these two felts right here. Next thing is the sharpeners. Um, there was a sharpener that came in your set and it's this little metal guy right here. And this sharpener is perfectly fine for um, sharpening your, the, the pencils that came along with the set. But I also included this guy right here, which is a canister um, sharpener. And the reason why I wanted you guys to have this is because it's, it's not as messy as this uh, sharpener. Um, so when you go to sharpen your pencil, it captures all your shavings in there. Um, whereas this one, you probably should have like e either a trash can next to you or a bowl on your desk where you can um, drop your shavings into. So that's why I included this guy too. But this, this of course works perfectly fine. Also included in that drawing set were um, a set of blending sticks. Now you have two of these shorter guys and then you have this fat blending stick. And with the fat blending stick, um, it, this is called a tortillon. Um, and you'll notice that it has points on both edges. 
And this is made of recycled paper that's just wound up. And you use this to blend. That's why they're called blending sticks. And I'll show you how to use these temporarily. You also have the regular um, fine point blending sticks that are shorter. Um, and uh, these allow for greater control and detail, where this will help you with larger coverage and, and areas. Again, I'll show you that in a few minutes. Do we have any questions so far about the materials? I know I kind of went through that really quickly. Um, this class is being um, recorded, so you'll be able to watch it back later. So forgive me if I'm going too fast. I only got an hour. <laughs> okay, if there are no questions on the materials, then um, I want to give you my first tip um, which is when it comes to your pencils, if you want to have, if you really want to have a good experience drawing, um, and I know I said there's no wrong way or right way, so there isn't still, but if you want to have better results with your drawing, um, make sure you keep your pencil points sharp. Um, that will definitely help you when you're trying to get some detail with the point and also to make broader strokes with the side. So I'm gonna get into technique now, since we're on that subject of the pencils and how, how to actually draw and how you can do draw different types of marks with your pencils. Um, Cause that's really what we're talking about here too, is that you're drawing a series of lines or you're, when you're drawing or you're creating uh, values and different types of values. Um, one thing that an exercise that will really help you get familiar with what each pencil can do is what is called a value run. Um, and I use that for when I teach my, my uh, classes, my drawing classes, um, I always have my students do different value runs with each of their pencils. Again, so you can get familiar with it. Um, so this is something that you'll want to do and notice also how I'm gripping the pencil. I'm gripping it on the back of the pencil. You can definitely certainly grip it at the closer to the tip. This allows you when you grip it at the tip to have more control over how you do your lines. Um, if you grip it on the back, you can get more painterly fluid lines and broader lines. So with these value just right here with these value runs what you do is you take each pencil and you apply a lot of pressure at the beginning and you go from one side of the paper and you slowly lift up on your press on your pressure that you're applying and you create basically a gradient and what this will do is it shows you just how much how dark you can get these pencils to this particular lead weight, which is an HB. Um, so if you do that a few times and start off with a lot of pressure and then go lighter as you, re as you make it from one side of the page to the next. And again, the goal is to create a nice smooth transition of value from very dark to of course the color of your paper here. So um, this is, that's the HB. So you can see how dark you can get with the HB. I'm gonna move now to the 2B pencil and um, let me sharpen it real quick. And well, I'm gonna do the same thing here, holding it back on near the end of the pencil so I can get some broad strokes. And again, going dark to light. And I'm not going to do this for every pencil. I think you should take, you know, if you're sitting in front of the TV tonight or you're just hanging out um, and you want to play around with these pencils, this is a good exercise to do. So continuing on, but I want to show you how dark you can actually get with some of these B pencils. So again, this is a 2B pencil and I'm applying some really good pressure, but I'm not I'm not using the tip of the pencil to apply my pressure because if you do that, you will crush the paper and then it becomes really super, super shiny because of the graphite, the lead that's on there. So you can kind of see slight, the slight difference here between your HB and your 2B and just really how dark that looks. So you can kind of see that how it's a little bit darker. Let me just jump ahead and show you how dark this 8B 
can get because it's uh, it's the softest color or it's the softest lead in your um, in your set. You can also tell the difference as you're making these marks. You can tell you can really feel as the pencil is rubbing across the surface of the paper, the difference as you get to the softer pencil lead weights. And you can even see here from these marks, like you can just see how that kind of just glides over the surface of the paper because on the surface of the paper, it's got these peaks and valleys actually, if we were to look at this um, under a microscope. And as you're gliding the softer lead, it can't get really into those, those nooks and crannies on the paper, so you see a little bit more of that paper kind of coming through. Whereas with a harder lead pencil like this HP, because it's a harder lead, it pushes down onto the paper and it actually flattens this out so that you see more of the pencil on there and less of the white of the paper. But this texture that you see here from your pencils, this is what you really want. And this is what makes pencil drawing very charming is this texture that's happening on right here with your pencil lead weights. Any questions about that? We have a couple of questions. Um, number one, what if you don't have these types of pencils? Are you able to, to still follow along today using your own pencils? Yes, absolutely. Um, if, you, if you just have your own pencils, um, like I have some examples of some other pencils here, like this is a, a mechanical pencil. Um, it's the one that has like the, the little, let's see, it's got the, you can see that the little um, uh, lead, the little tiny lead in there. You can use one of these if you have one of these. A standard number two will work fine. Any, for, for today's class, absolutely. Um, any pencil would work fine. I love working with these mechanical pencils here. They have a lead that go that inserts um, into a mechanical shaft. And the, the, the thing that I love about these pencils, and I, again, I would, this is something that I would cover in an advanced drawing class, um, is that, you know, when you're sharpening a pencil, the pencil starts to get shorter and shorter and shorter and eventually, you know, it's, it's hard to, it becomes harder to use. They do sell pencil extenders. I do have some, but they're in my toolbox and it's in my um, closet. So sorry about that. I uh, can't show you exactly what those look like, but this never gets short, but it also requires a, um, a lead pointer. But again, I don't want to get, in, uh, get us distracted with that. Um, but whatever pencil you have at home, that'll work perfectly fine for what we're doing today. Okay, and do you have any suggestions if you don't have blending sticks handy? Some people in the chat have been suggesting maybe a Q-tip or something similar. Do you have anything that is you a might great, recommend? Yep, that, that's a great tip. So kudos for some whoever pointed that out. Yes, a Q-tip is perfectly fine. You could also use a um, paper towel um or a kleenex but you know what you want to do hold on i have them right over here i can show you real quick like if you have a kleenex what you can do is just take it and twist it so that you have a fine point and then you can use that to rub as well paper towel might be better because it's a little bit sturdier these after a while will start to fray and they're not as good so great questions okay so moving on, um, now that we covered doing these value runs um, and why they're, another reason why they're so important is that it helps you to see the different value ranges that you can get with your pencils because that's that when we go to drawing this in about 10 minutes when we start doing the um, hummingbird, you'll see how that comes into play. It's all about value and it's all about lights and darks. Um, so let's talk really quickly about some different drawing styles. Um, I'm just going to focus on a couple of different drawing styles. I've got my HB here. The most common drawing style that a lot of artists like to use is what's called crosshatch. Hopefully you guys can see me when I'm writing this. It's called crosshatch. And basically that's when you're creating a series of lines. This is a technique that I favor. Um, and you layer these lines on top of one another to create the values. Um, and you want to stack, you want to rotate your lines, vary them, um, so that what you're building up 
is a value. So you can kind of see um, still the paper, the, the value, the white of the paper still coming through all of those lines that you're building up on top of each other. So this is kind of like a haystack technique where you're just, you're laying down a bunch of lines and it creates your value for you. This is something that you could do too as to practice is just to sit there and do this and uh, um, get your hand used to making these types of marks. Doing big and long and just layering them over each other and getting a feel for your pencils. And remember, always keep your pencils sharp. So um, be sure to sharpen them regularly um, between your drawings or between each stroke. So that's what's called crosshatch. Another one is what we just call scrumble. And that's just where you're taking the, you're taking the pencil and you're just kind of like what I was doing with those value runs and you're just doing this. And you could do little circles, um, whatever feels comfortable for you to help build up your values. Um, you can just go back and forth and you're just letting the pencil glide over the top of the paper. And maybe you go back and you go back over one area multiple times to build up a darker value. So this is very common. Um, this is a very common technique, especially with beginners because this takes, cross hatching takes a little bit of time and um, practice to master. Um, so this is perfectly fine here doing this. Okay, um, so those are the two different, the two different, or the two different um, techniques that we have. Um, now, talking about values again, um, just keep in mind that, of course, when we're working with pencil, there, it, we're not, we don't have a white pencil. We do have erasers where we can pull out lighter colors when we need to. Um, so we have, or lighter values, I should say, not colors. Um, so there's like this, the, the kneaded eraser here, which we use to create those lighter, lighter values. Um, if we've gone too dark, let's say, for example, here, um, we've just done, we went too far, we, and we don't want to go too, too dark, too fast. We want to build up our values slowly. Let me mark that down as a tip. Build up values slowly. We don't want to rush. Um, to create dark, but let's just say we've gone too dark and we want to lighten this up. That's where our kneaded eraser comes into play. So we use this um, and it's called a kneaded eraser because you need it in order to use it like I am right now. It's a little stiff because I didn't have it in my hand. And so what you do is you press it firmly over the area and you can see it just lightens it up. It removes the loose the loose graphite that is on top of the paper. So there you go, you can lighten it up. Don't necessarily need to use this for um, complete erasing because that's where this guy comes in. Let's say you want to erase an entire area. That's where this guy comes in. Now notice one thing, there is still a little bit of a uh, uh, um, stain from the um, from the graphite. That's why I was calling out the white of the paper. So if whenever you're drawing, like if we're drawing this, um, when we go to draw this hummingbird, you'll notice there are some really high highlights. Like you have it in, there's a dot in the eye. There's something to the, there's part of the um, feathers here that are just to the left of the eye that are really light. These are the areas that I wanna keep the white of the paper. So I wanna make sure I don't draw over those areas and try to lighten that because then we won't be able to get really those highlights and the full range of values that we want to have. Because that's important. Having the full range of values is um, extremely important. So one of the things I look at when I'm looking at this particular, particularly before I start drawing, I start analyzing um, my subject matter and one of the things that I look for is, is where are my darkest darks and where are my lightest lights? So um, let me just make a note here for you guys. It's like, where are my darkest darks? And also, 
my lightest lights. So that's what I'm looking at here. So I've, I've, I've located where my lightest lights are and I've located where my darkest darks are. It's pretty much that eye. So that's gonna be um, where I'm gonna wanna go my darkest for sure, obviously. I mean, it sounds pretty, pretty obvious, but when you, when, you got, when you figure that out, then you can start relating it to all the other values. And that's really what you wanna see. That's really what you wanna train your eye to see is all the different values and trying to match those values. Now this is in, this is of course a black and white printout. Colors also have different values. If you're beginning, um, I definitely recommend if you're using a reference to try to find black and white or you can convert it, print it out black and white if you have a home printer. If you don't and you're just using um, something from you find on a computer, it's no problem. It's perfectly fine, of course. All right, so let's move on to actually starting our drawing and what we want to look at when we start this hummingbird. I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Actually, I'm going to start with, I'm picking out a hard pencil. I'm starting with my H pencil. If you don't have an H pencil at home, it's perfectly fine. If you're using a, a pencil, you don't know the lead weight, or if it's like a regular, your, your regular number two pencil, um, just be mindful of your pressure and how much pressure you're putting onto the paper. That's another thing to practice, is to get used to varying your pressure and doing different, um, like another, another technique I can show you real quick as a tip, is when you do your like harder pressure, you'll notice that your lines tend to be uniform in shape as you're doing this un uniform pressure um, that's being applied to your paper. Um, if you try doing lots of pressure and then lightening up, lots of pressure and then lightening up, you'll notice that you get these really beautiful thick and thin lines. Practice that with your pencil. See how thick you can get. And I'm using pretty much the point of the pencil here to draw, so that's why I'm holding it a little bit closer to the tip. Um, if I held it back here and tried to do this, um, I don't really want to do, like, I have to kind of adjust my angle. Um, if you do it from the back, you'll notice that you can't really get that same type of line quality that you were here when you were using the tip. This is still a good line. It's still a nice line. It's very painterly and fluid, um, but for this exercise, you know, just try to use the tip and practice your, your um, pressure and how much pressure you're applying. And try that with the different weights of pencils. You'll see that you can get some really nice thick and thin lines, almost very ink, it's almost very um, uh, brush pen and ink uh, looking. All right, so let's go back to our, our hummingbird. So coming back to our hummingbird here, let me make sure I've got my H pencil. Let's try it in. I was going a little fast there. Hopefully I didn't crack my lead. Nope, didn't. So I'm starting out with my H pencil. And what I'm looking at when I'm starting my drawing, what I want to look for here is I'm breaking down our hummingbird into shapes. Um, I'm not going to start like just drawing out the eye first and then working my way out from there because that can lead you into trouble with your proportions. Um, if you, proportions really shouldn't be too much of a concern for us at this stage as you're beginning and you're starting out. Value is what we really want to focus on. As we get better at creating good range of value, then we'll start to focus on proportions and making sure everything is in equal proportion to each other. But for right now, um, in order to get started, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, so what are the shape, basic shapes, geometric shapes that I can work with here? I've got a triangle in the wing right here. I've kind of got a oval egg shape happening in the head right here. I've got kind of like a rectangular trapezoid happening in the body. And then another triangle down here at the tail. 
And then of course the tip right here, the beak is kind of a really elongated, long, narrow um, triangle as well. And of course back here, another kind of curved triangle in the back wing. Where I wanna start is I wanna start with the main core body shape, which is right here in um, right here in the core of the hummingbird, which was that triangle, or that triangle, um, that uh, rectangle that I was talking about. So I'm gonna hold my, uh, let's see, make sure that y'all can see both at the same time. I'm gonna fold this over just so that I can bring this into the picture. So you all can see it a little bit better. There we go, that's a lot better. Um, so this, this um, kind of trapezoid shape right there. And I'm sketching it in and doesn't matter if I don't get it at the right angle. And as I'm drawing, I'm my eye, my, if, if you don't mind going to the front facing camera for a second. So my face is like, I'm keeping, I'm not moving, I'm not going back and forth like this from paper to hummingbird. I'm not moving my neck, I'm not moving my head. I'm actually keeping my head straight and I'm moving my eyes and I'm, I've got my pencil on the paper and I'm keeping my pencil on the paper as I move my eyes back and forth from the piece of paper to the hummingbird. That will really help you because I'm trying to coordinate my, my brain and what I'm seeing with my eyes and my brain with my hand. So practice that. Um, we, beginner in drawing, we like to do what's called the blind contour uh, drawing, which is really can be aggravating, but it's very helpful. Stare at your pet at home, stare at your brother, your sister, your spouse, one, and if they don't know you're looking at them, and just stare at them and then move your hand and trace the outline of their face or their body and see what you can come up with. That's a lot of fun. Okay, we can go back to the overhead view now. So I've blocked in that kind of trapezoid looking figure. It's not exactly perfect, but again, like I said, I'm not worried about it. Now I'm gonna go focus on the teardrop shape that's happening here in the head. And it's kind of an oval that works in here like that. And I have the beak and I'm just gonna draw a line for the beak to signify where the beak is going. So what we have is kind of an abstract hummingbird that's being developed now. Uh, we can see kind of start coming to life a little bit. Um, now I'm gonna go back to the tail end. It kind of goes down, if you can see it here, in relation to the, trap, the trapezoid of the body. It kind of goes down a little bit here in the back and then comes up right there. So we kind of got that going on and then I'm just gonna add a little bit for the tail. You can see there's a curvature here in the body. Let's just go ahead and put that guy in too. Give him a little bit of a belly in there because he was a little, a little bit thin. So we just wanna put that there as well. Um, so let's go to the wings and we can see that thin triangular wing that kind of sweeps back. So I'm kind of, here's what I'm looking at just so that you guys know what I'm looking at. I'm kind of looking at this in here and then where the back of the head kind of meets that part of the trapezoid. So I'm kind of visually trying to measure this distance in here and in here. And I'm guessing it's right about right. The, where the wing meets the body is right about right there. So I just mark that and then I'm gonna create the wing sweeping back in the triangular. And oh, and notice here too, where that triangle comes to and where that meets here is right where that back end of the trapezoid meets this end part of the tail. So that's where I'm gonna connect it. It's almost like connect the dots. So there's that wing kind of thrown in there um, and, sketched, and sketched in. 
Um, if you guys are having trouble seeing, it's because I'm using the H, so it's a little bit light and I'm not doing heavy pressure. I will bring in, um, I'm gonna move to the HB pencil next to really start building up my values. And now I'm gonna go and draw this wing in the back here. And if I'm going too fast too, for some of you, this is being recorded. It will be available um, on our Michael's website and you'll be able to play it back and follow along um, as, uh, as slowly as you like. So I'm gonna create the back wing that's kind of back here. And there we go. So we have the makings of our butterfly, or butterfly. I said that the last time I did this class. It's a hummingbird. So we have the makings of our hummingbird. Um, it's just the, the core shapes that are down. And now we can really focus on starting to build up our values. Now, if you guys remember, I had just recently said we want to think about where our darkest darks are and where our lightest lights are. So we see that in here along just underneath the throat back in here is where we want to make sure we preserve the white of the paper. We also want to preserve the white of the paper here um, right behind the eye. Speaking of the eye, let's mark the eye in there. Now, if you miss the target, if it doesn't get, um, if it doesn't land where you, th it's, it, it should land, don't worry about it. Practice it, keep doing this, keep drawing over and over again. And before you know it, um, you'll be, um, you'll have more confidence in your drawing. So I'm just marking the eye in there. Um, Stephanie, do we have any questions that I'm missing? Um, people uh, want to know what pencil you're using every time. So if you could just kind of try to remember to announce that for us. Sure. Um, still on the edge. So far, and I think we'll have a lot of people following up with the video recording, which will be on michaels.com slash classes. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, so um, I'm still on the H pencil because I am laying out um, the, eye, the location of the eye here. Um, a lot of, if you guys notice, there are a lot of details in here, like the feathers. Um, and I'm sure that can be really intimidating, just trying to create feathers. Um, what you got to keep in mind, feathers and just like hair, it, it's value. It's light and dark. And that's really what you just need to focus on is making sure you get all those values relatively um, to where what you're looking at uh, close to it. Again, no right or wrong way. Um, it's supposed to be having fun. So um, I'm going to start uh, developing and building up. I'm going to start here in the head, um, since I'm sure a lot of you are probably more interested in drawing the head out than the rest of the body. Um, so I am moving from my H pencil to my HB pencil now. And as you can see, I need to sharpen it. So I am. Um, I'm going to be speeding through this a little bit, um, and I apologize for that. But keep in mind, when you follow along at home and you watch the recording, um, pause the video, sharpen your pencils in between. I don't want to waste too much time sharpening my pencils because I want to make sure that I can develop out this drawing for you. All right, so starting with my HB pencil, I am going to make sure that I'm gonna mark out that white area, that lightest light value that is behind my eye. You probably can't see it, but I faintly, because I'm using very low pressure right now, I use the HB pencil just to create an outline. And I, it, it, I don't wanna color into or uh, draw into that space. So holding the pencil on the back, let me kind of get this in the center here so you guys can see. Um, holding my pencil on the back end of the, um, oh, holding it on the back end of the pencil here, I'm just going to lightly start scrumbling in value all throughout the head, except I'm not going into that area, and I'm also not going to go into the eye. So I'm just laying down a ground value. and all in that area. I'm not too worried about following the shape here. That's not important to me, like I said, at this point. 
um, eventually we will, when we, as we progress in our drawing journey, we'll get more conscious about that. But I am just laying down a very soft, oops, I'm glad I did that because I went into the no-fly zone here with the hummingbird. Um, and that's when our, that's when our needed eraser comes into play. So I just created a little point with my kneaded eraser and I'm gonna go in there and gently lift up what I, the mark that I made in that white area. So that'll take it out. All right, so using that HB, I've laid down that value. I'm gonna mark out the rest of the beak here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the shape that's being created here underneath and then follow it all the way around um, to create the beak. And I'm doing very light pressure with the HB and I'm looking at the contour, the shape that's happening here and I'm creating as close as I can the outline of that part of the hummingbird. And if it's not correct, it's okay. If it's not exact, it's absolutely fine. All right, so let's start building up more of our values. I am going to now move on to my B pencil. And if you are using one pencil at home, just apply a little bit more pressure. I'm gonna sharpen this, make sure it's sharp. And one thing I wanna point out here and call out is looking at the value as it, this, we know that the shape of the hummingbird here is rounded, right? That it's going, curving back into space. I want my marks to follow that contour. So when I'm doing it here, when I'm making my marks on the page, I'm gonna follow that contour as I'm um, moving my pencil back and forth. This will really help push that illusion of something curving back into space. And I'm going to come up here and lay out some more of that value. And then I'm going to do the same thing um, over here on the back of the head where I'm going to come out. And I'm kind of doing a hybrid cross hatch slash scrumble here to really help me create that illusion of it curving back into space. So this again is my B pencil. And I am starting to lay in some of the darker values. I'm going to come up here to the top of the head and do the same thing. A little bit darker at the edge, lighter as we come in towards the center of the head. So I'm laying down, building up more of my values. Let's get start getting into the beak a little bit. And I didn't use my HB to get into the into the beak, I'm using my B instead because I need a little bit darker value. And I'm gonna go underneath and follow the bottom of the beak. And I'm not doing too much pressure. I'm really letting the pencil and the lead, the graphite do most of the work here for me. I'm just guiding my pencil along the surface. Now, when you need some finer details, let's say we wanna get some of the finer details that are happening here um, along the top edge of the beak, that's when you can kind of come down on your pencil to get more control and do a little bit more pressure to deposit more of the graphite onto the paper and create a darker value. And I'm gonna do that here. And if you want at this stage, um, you can actually grab your 4B pencil and you could build up those values even more. So I'm going in here and I'm really getting those values up and building them up on top of that B that I had, the B lead weight that I had. When I draw, when I'm drawing for myself, I'll have, my hand will be covered in pencils like this. When I'm drawing, and I usually have my um, reference image up. So as I'm drawing and I need to switch back and forth from pencils, I have a multitude of pencils in one hand. <laughs> Let's go back to that 4B. 
And don't let me forget to remind you guys how to use these guys. I'm gonna do that here in a second, um, just to show you how you can blend this all together and make it look a little bit softer. So I've got my 4B and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker here, especially I'm looking right here along the bottom of the throat. I really want that to be dark. Again, my, I want my strokes to kind of follow the curve and the contour of the shape of the hummingbird. So uh, what I'm doing is, if you guys notice, I'm making marks like this. I have, I'm applying pressure and then sweep out. Apply pressure and sweep out. That's another technique that you can pre practice to create kind of like a fade out on your mark, on your line. Um, that will really help you get, create those values that are darker along an edge and um, lighter as they sweep out away, um, like what we're seeing here on the bottom part of the hummingbird. So there we go. Um, and you can kind of see it's starting to take form, start, starting to take shape. Now let's grab our fat um, stubby tortillon. If you don't have one of these at home, you could use a Q-tip that was um, as cleverly called out by one of our viewers. You could also use a paper towel or a um, tissue paper. Just make sure you get it to a fine point and then use your finger. Um, speaking about fingers, I forgot to call out one other tip um, where our spare um, printer paper at home can come in handy. Since we're working in graphite, and I know not all of you are right-handed like me, you're left-handed, but I like to keep a sheet of paper underneath my hand, especially if, let's say I'm gonna go start working in this wing over here, I wanna cover that up to protect it. Because what'll happen is the bottom, the ball of your fist, if you have it on top of there and you're making your marks, it's gonna smudge all this and all your beautiful work is just gonna get messed up. So. Just remember to have a piece of paper underneath your hand as you're working in other areas, just to protect them. Of course, if you're left-handed, keep it underneath your left, um, your left hand. So this is where we can really, this, the tortillon comes in handy, is I can blend this out. And you can see how soft that makes that. And you can pull, and you're using it like a drawing tool and you're pulling it, and again, pressure makes all the difference here. The harder you press, the more you're gonna pick up of that graphite, but I'm just kind of softly pulling it up away from the throat there. What you'll see is that it kind of softens out, and then the, the values can kind of tend to bleed together. That's when you wanna come back and grab my 4B again, and then reapply some more of that dark value. Now, the little blending stubs, this is better for when you're working in tight spaces and you wanna blend in smaller parts and smaller details. So like right here on the beak, that's where I'm gonna use this. And again, I'm using it as a drawing tool. I'm applying soft presser, pressure to pull up that graphite that's on the paper and Use that as a drawing tool. Let me bring in the reference so you all can see. So you can see that the difference here, if you look, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this, but there, there is a light streak that's going right through the middle of that, of the, um, of the beak. That's because it is a cylinder. And as the light is shining down from our light source, it's hitting this area. It's a little bit more on the top. So that's where we have a reflected light from our light source. So it kind of creates, if we were to blow that up and see that, this is what we would see, is that we would see that kind of light streak going through there. Um, that highlight that goes across the beak. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I chose to emphasize that um, highlight than what we're seeing in the actual reference because you need to exaggerate some things just for the sake of your drawing. Let's move on to the eye. 
Now with the eye, since I know that that's my darkest dark, I'm gonna start out with a, with a softer pencil. But the first thing I will, actually that's a lie, I am actually gonna start, start out with a hard pencil, um, a 2H or an H, or if you're using a one pencil at home, just use light pressure. But there is a highlight in the eye. Now, I don't know if you all can see it, but I am gonna mark that on the paper. It doesn't matter if I am close to really where it is or not from my reference image, but I just marked it on the paper there and I made it a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than what is here, than, than what's shown in my reference. Because I want to give myself some room in case um, I have a stray mark that will cover it. Um, so I'm moving on to a soft pencil first, which is, let me find, let me locate it. My pencils are all over the place now. Where did I put that? B. Okay. So I'm going to start out with a B pencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down that foundation value first, soft pressure, not going in where I put that highlight. And so I'm not doing a lot of pressure in here. I'm just kind of blocking it out, laying down again, foundation of the first value like so. And then I'm gonna move to a dark or a softer pencil, which is my 2B. And then I'm gonna layer that on top of that. Now, what I'm also doing is that I know that eyes the way they are is that we have our highlight here and then they also have a darker iris or the darker center. And then of course they have a lighter, like the, the actual iris part of the eye in here. And the cornea is back in the back of the eye there. So I'm exaggerating that just because I'm going off of what I know in my head. And so I'm going to make it a little bit darker using more pressure, the tip of the pencil, um, I would have sharpened this, but for the sake of time, um, I just didn't do that. And I left that big highlight. So you can really see that the eye is starting to take shape. I'm also going to go around the outside of the eye with my 2B and just outline the eye as well, because that really helps to create that illusion of the eye having that curve to it. So you all see what I did there? Awesome. Hey Nick, we have a couple of questions. Sure. So uh, first thing, when you use the kneaded eraser, how do you get rid of those little eraser bits without smudging your picture? That's a wonderful question. And it's the same if you're using, you're using um, uh, your regular eraser, if you're, if you're doing large areas. You never want to use your hand to sweep away the nubs, um, the eraser uh, chaff, as it's called. If you have a cheap paintbrush at home, um, you could use this to sweep away, and you want to use light pressure. You, you never really want to blow either with your mouth because that will get spit all over your um, uh, drawing and then that will smear too and it'll also affect the surface of your paper. So if you have a cheap brush like this, um, you can just use that. If you don't have any sort of brush like this, then what I would recommend is use a piece of paper and use that to sweep away your nibs. And if that doesn't work, if they're really stubborn and staying on there, pick up your paper, hold it over your trash and shake it. And that should get it all off. Okay. And do we have to clean the blending sticks or do anything between use? With the kneaded eraser, um, I'm just going to talk about that. You clean the kneaded eraser by kneading it. Um, and that will take out all your, or um, that will help to expose more of the clean kneaded eraser. With your blending sticks, you can sharpen these. Now, the sharpener that comes with the set is the perfect size for the large um the the, the large uh, uh tortillon and you can use that now these do get dull um so it will they'll lose they will lose their um quality after a while um so you might need to pick up another one you you know the the canister um eraser
eraser two will catch that, or eraser, um, sharpener will catch all those as well. And then with the, the um, sharper um, or the more pointed uh, blending stuff, does, it still fits in there as well. So that's how you would, you can use the sharpener or um, you could use a, I don't recommend this, but you could use a exacto blade to sharpen it as well. It's just that with the sharp, with the exacto blade, you have an exposed blade and you could hurt yourself. So I don't re necessarily recommend that for beginners. You could also use a piece of uh, sandpaper as well to clean that off, like a fine grit sandpaper. Great questions. All right, so we have about four minutes left. I wanna show you some quick techniques to get some of these details that you see here in the feathers along the bottom of the throat. Um, you can go back to using like a B pencil. Let me sharpen it real quick. And if you notice about with the, if you look at your reference um, and if you look at the, the hummingbird that I have here, all it is is really these, the, the feathers are just like groups of value, small blotches of value. That's it. So I'm not worried, again, about making sure that I've got every single feather and every single value um, in there. This is, the reference is a guide to kind of help you practice. Um, so I'm just looking for the pattern that's being created by those feathers. And that is all I'm doing is using different pressure and scrumbling them in there to create the, the illusion of those feathers. Because again, um, what we're looking at here is just a group of values that, that and that we're, that's what we're just trying to copy. I can't stress that more than enough. I've probably said values today more times than I will say um, for the rest of the week. But that's all I'm doing. So we have a couple minutes left. Are there any additional questions that I can answer? We had a question kind of related to the smudging, um, but how do you store or close the notebook without ruining your creation so far? That's a great question. You can do one of two things. You can take it out um, and just cut it out. I wouldn't rip it out. I would use either a pair of scissors or if you have an exacto blade, you can cut it out. Or what you can do is just put a spare piece of paper over the top of your drawing and then close it. You can also take hairspray, if you have hairspray, and let's say you're finished drawing, if you're done with your drawing and you like it and you don't plan on working on it anymore, just spray it with some aerosol hairspray, lightly coat it, and that will fix the, um, the hummingbird, all of the graphite to your paper. We also do sell a workable fixative. Um, Krylon has a workable fixative um, that you can purchase where um, it, they call it a workable fixative because after you lay down some graphite, you can spray it, let it dry, and then you can start working back into it. The only problem is you won't be able to lift out and erase those other, um, the marks that you have previously laid down. But if you don't have, if you don't want to do any of that, just keep a piece of paper, um, spare piece of paper over the top of it and close it like that. Just make sure you don't jostle around too much because that will, that will definitely smudge your graphite. Good question. Okay. And then last question, um, just kind of philosophically about drawing, what if you have a tendency to make things too dark? Any tips to remind yourself to keep things lighter as you go along? Pressure is the first thing when it comes to, if you're going too dark too fast, it's probably because you're putting way too much pressure on the paper with your pencil. Try, that's where practicing comes in, where you wanna practice making your marks, where you really don't, because if you're going too dark, like I have a B pencil here, if you're going too dark too fast, it's because you're pressing too hard. Use lighter, lighter marks and vary your pressure and practice doing that. Um, also, that's where your needed eraser friend comes into play, because if you are going too dark too fast, use this guy to lighten back up. 
I think that's it for our um, class today. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and please, if you want to watch this again, it will be back up on our, class, on our um, website. Um, again, my name is Nick Mikesell. Um, if you want to share your drawings, your finished drawings with us, please go to or use the hashtag made it with, make it with Michaels. Um, and let's see what you guys did. You could also share it with me if you want on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is Nick Mike so at Nick Mike so. Oh, I don't think you guys can see that. So here. <laughs> Hope to hear from you guys. Thanks a lot.